Well, hello, I am David Hibbert, and this series is called Answers. In this series, my goal is to try to help you by sharing with you short biblical answers to questions that people have been asking me, really, from around the world. And today's question is, why do you dedicate children to the Lord? You know, some people ask that. Why, why do you do this? Uh, the Bible doesn't seem to command it, so why do you do it? Well, first we have to look at our need for a ceremony. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And so God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. See, every human being is created in God's own image and likeness. And they're com then commissioned to be fruitful, to impact their world, and to leave a legacy for the next generation. As a result, every person has this God-given sense and God-given excitement that each one of their children has a special purpose, a special destiny, and this excitement moves believers to want to dedicate their children to the Lord so that they would have His help in fulfilling their destiny. People call this ceremony a child dedication ceremony, but in reality, we also need to dedicate ourselves as parents because we also need God's help as well as our family and friends do in order to properly raise this child as stewards for the Lord. In the Bible, there are two biblical examples of a child dedication. First is an Old Testament example. We have the example of Hannah and Samuel. Hannah, uh, who had been barren for many years, went and uh, uh, asked God for a child. And, and God uh, gave her a child, and she decided to dedicate this child, Samuel, to the Lord in gratitude for God blessing her with a son. For Samuel chapter 20. 5 to 28, Elkanah and Hannah brought the boy Samuel to Eli the priest, and she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him, and so now I give him to the Lord. <clears throat> And as we know, because Samuel was dedicated to God, he grew up with the hand of the Lord upon him, and he became a great leader and a great prophet. We also have a New Testament example of child dedication, the example of uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, who brought their child Jesus to the temple to be presented to the Lord. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 22, when the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And so even though Jesus was the Son of God, Mary and Joseph still felt a need to dedicate him to God so that God's hand would be upon him. Now, in addition to the two biblical uh, examples, we have two biblical principles to also guide us into dedicating our children to the Lord. First, I call the principle of image. And it's taken from Matthew 22 uh, that started off innocently when, when people came to Jesus and said, Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar, to an ungodly leader? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 21. Then the Pharisees sent to Jesus, saying, Tell us, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus said, Show me the tax money. And so they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose image and whose inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, render therefore or give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So the coin, uh, Jesus said, was created by Caesar and had his image imprinted on the coin. And so Jesus said it was right to give that coin back to Caesar in taxes. Well, the Bible says that every child, as we already learned, is created in the image and likeness of God. Those children have God's inscription, God's imprint on them. And so therefore, as God's stewards, it is very right for us to dedicate our children back to the Lord. The second principle 
I call the principle of building a godly pathway. The second principle is found in Proverbs chapter 22. It says, train up a child, this is verse 6, train up a child in the way it should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. See, when parents choose to dedicate themselves and their children to the Lord and look to God for wisdom and guidance, they, we, we start to build this godly pathway for our children to follow in from the day they're really uh, as an early, early babe. And, and they grow, they stay in that pathway and grow into maturity, okay? You know, just as Jesus uh, told us that water baptism is really the first step in developing a godly pathway for every uh, new Christian, right? Go in the world, go in the world, we'll preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, then teach them to obey everything which I've commanded you. Okay, so just as water baptism is the first step in developing a godly pathway for every new Christian, child dedication can be the first step in developing a godly pathway for every new child. And so that's why we dedicate our children to the Lord. God bless you. Hope to see you for another episode of Answers.